I'm gonna, I'd like some clarification on that second sentence of that paragraph. Forget not that the witness to the world of evil cannot speak except for what has seen the need for evil in the world. That, that sentence is hard for me to understand. Well, forget not that the witness to the world of evil cannot speak. In other words, the, the scream is just a scream. And it's only the purpose, or, or in the mind, looking for the world to bring witness to evil and guilt that makes, this, that makes it speak that way. In other words, it's, as long as there's guilt in the mind, and as long as guilt is the purpose of the mind, the mind still wants to hold on to the ego, then it calls forth automatically witnesses from the world that will support and reinforce that wish or belief. It's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you really are anchored that you're unworthy and lacking and scarce and guilty, then the world will gladly, you know, bring witness to it. It's just, um, I guess another way to come at it would be the Course talks about how that, uh, that you send messengers forth. There are the messengers of fear and then there are the messengers of love. And the messengers of fear bring back messages of fear. Or another way to think of it is in terms of the body and the five senses. That there's nothing, it's not like things happen in the world, you know, you see light and light gets reflected into the eye and then the image gets turned upside down and gets message sent to the brain. It's the mind has the categories and has the, the judging and the guilt in it and then the five senses just bring forth witnesses to what the mind wants. To fill up the boxes. To fill up the boxes. So the, if we look at that one, forget not the witnesses to the world of evil cannot speak except for what has seen a need for evil in the world. The ego has seen a need for evil in the world. The, the mind that is invested in the ego sees a need for evil in the world because that way the world is kind of like the scapegoat. The world is the source of suffering. The world it contains all the causes of suffering. And there's no need to look at the mind because the world seems to be the cause of, this, the cause of suffering. Now, if you can trace it back and see, oh, it's just my belief in guilt that's producing a seemingly a bringing witnesses of a guilty world or guilty persons and fear and destruction and all this. If I can trace it back down and see that the belief in the ego is, is false, then I can accept a new purpose. And everything that I look upon will just fit into the box of forgiveness. There, there will, I will not attempt to use scenarios and memories and things that are in the world to justify the ego anymore because there's no point in justifying it. There's no point in trying to protect the ego or keep it concealed and hidden. So, in one part of the Course, Jesus says, you know, it's not that you shouldn't see the body, but it's it's just looking at your wish to murder. At your, at one point, it's saying, you know, it's not that you should try to see your brother's body as sinless, but it's saying, look at your, at your wish to condemn him. That's what has to be examined. A lot of times people, when people read the Course, they think, well, if everyone's spirit, then, you know, I just shouldn't see any bodies. But that's like saying, I shouldn't see any effects. Now, wait a minute, if you believe in a false cause, why shouldn't you see effects? If you believe in a false cause... Mm -hmm. You surely will see. Unreal or hallucinating... Effects. Come on. <laughs>
So we'll keep going into this cause business here and, and tracing it in because, again, there's a lot of things in this world that seem to be great, okay, groovy, wonderful, and there's a lot of forms of attack that aren't seen as forms of attack at all. If the mind could see them as forms of attack and realize that any form of attack is really keeping the awareness of God out of one's mind, then it would be a piece of cake, you know, to give up the give up the branches or to to give up the world. But it's that some forms of attack don't seem like forms of attack. In fact, they seem quite attractive, and that's the ones that that we'll look at as we keep going. The witnesses to sin all stand within one little space, and it is here you find the cause of your perspective on the world. Once you were unaware of what the cause of everything the world appeared to thrust upon you, uninvited and unasked, must really be. Of one thing you were sure, of all the many causes you perceived as bringing pain and suffering to you, your guilt was not among them, nor did you in any way request them for yourself. This is how all illusions came about. The one who makes them does not see himself as making them, and their reality does not depend on him. This is the dynamic. I just, growing up, I never had when I was feeling sick, angry, depressed, upset, usually they weren't even talked about anyway, the feelings, but certainly it wasn't taught to me that it, that it was a guilty mind that was the cause of all these things. Yeah. There are many, many okay. myriad of forms. But it seems almost automatic that we just say, oh, you're hurt, what happened? What did, what you, did you do? do? Did somebody do that, or did you fall, or, I mean, you know, it's like we start searching for the cause, or if somebody's sad, or if somebody's crying, you say, well, what, what happened? Did somebody hurt your feelings, or did you get hurt, or... A you know? sniffling nose, all these things about, did you go outside without your jacket on? Yeah. Or... Where were you? Did you catch the flu? From did so and so have the flu? And you know, on and on and on. They all these <laughs> have nothing to do with anything. It's just the whole gamut of things. Of one thing, you were sure. Of all the many causes you perceived as bringing pain and suffering to you, your guilt was not among them. Maybe the more helpful question to ask would be, what are you feeling guilty about? But do you ask that to the person perceiving the no. the pain? <laughs> I don't let's know. say I see pain and it doesn't have to be in this body. Let's say I see my son experiencing what I see to be pain. Yeah. Is that the guilt in me then? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the sickness. If it looks like pain to you, And there's the wish to see pain. Because it could look like a call for love. I mean, that's another option. The deceived mind is so convinced. I mean, if it if it sees a mangled foot or something where it says that's got to hurt, it's, that's based on its conclusion of the past. As if, I've experienced that too. <laughs> or I know other people that have experienced that, and I know that that has to hurt whatever that's the course says in one of the workbook lessons pain is a wrong perspective all, all perception of pain it's not like you you need to perceive that there really is pain in the world and then find a way to hocus hocus pocus, pocus it away or you know pain wave a magic wand yeah if you're seeing pain My in the pain world your pain. if you're seeing pain anywhere in the world including the, the body or any body else or any place else, 
It's just a misperception. That's what has to be healed. Now, admittedly, you have to go into the metaphysics, and certainly when I've even begun to talk about what I just said in groups around the country, invariably there's a Yeah, That's right, like... Easily. Yeah. Lately. May I say this, uh, what you were just, the sentence you were just asking for the clarification about, you know, the mind that sees pain, sees pain because it wishes to see pain. And then, then, then the question is, you know, why do I want to see pain? But what gain do I think there is in that? I just have to be clear as to not assume that my by that doing by calling for witnesses of pain that I'm writing the script because you know you know my son falls off of his bike and scrapes his hands and knees and is crying if I see that as pain then that's my perception, but that's not my perception didn't cause him to fall off the bike. Necessarily, it's what I'm seeing as a result. Of, I mean, that's what I want clarification on. Well, that's a good good one to go into because I have been in different places where they have taught you are responsible for the starving children in Somalia, you're responsible for cancer, and everybody you see with cancer, you're killing them, kind of like and. From that perspective, it would seem again as if guilt would be inevitable. If I'm cause, if I am the cause of every mm -hmm. pain in the world, then I am to blame. In that case, and again, that's where that I am responsible. We have to get real clear on that. That pain is a wrong perspective. It's a distorted perception, and pain. Another name for pain would be wrong-mindedness. And the correction for wrong-mindedness is right-mindedness. Right-mindedness doesn't doctor up pain. It just sees the impossibility of it. It's, first of all, you have to not project responsibility for the ego. So you have to come to see that the ego is a belief in the mind. And then, you have to, as the Course says, quickly turn it over to the Holy Spirit. You know, to, to, to withdraw the projection from out there, so to speak, to within, and to hold on to it in a personal sense, to believe that I keep, you know, cause the, the pain that I'm seeing in Corey, or even, you know, I as mind cause the pain that's still all within the wrong mindedness. So the clarity is is coming back to to see that that there's nothing causative on the screen, and that everything is just images. I mean that's where the the forgiveness really starts to come in. It's not as if Corey falling off a bike, you know cause the pain. That has to be questioned. There's nothing in the world that produces pain. The old thing about like when they give you a bonk on the knee, you know, to check the reflexes if you feel thing there. It's not the the hammer striking the knee. It's not the finger touching the burner that produces the pain. Guilt, wrong mindedness, judgment, ordering of thoughts. That's where the guilt comes from and then when the mind feels guilty, then it calls forth witnesses in the world. A child that seems to be in pain, a finger that seems to be in pain, a foot that seems to be in pain. Perceiving pain over in Ethiopia or in the world anywhere, that's just a witness that's calling, that's being called forth from the, from the guilt. So the script was written. And the only pain has come comes from a misperception.